So what's up to my beautiful queens, divas of a more mature age? Welcome back to my channel. I am the Eva Monroe. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel today. So I apologize in advance for the glare. I have no contacts today, so you're stuck and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna do the best I can to try not to blind anybody. Um, this is important today, you guys. I had to do this video. I had no intentions on doing a video today at all. But in the past 30 days, ladies, this is real life, okay? This ain't made for TV. This is real life. I have heard of, dealt with, or been involved in three situations where husbands, men, have got up, suddenly packed their bags and left their marriages. Not boyfriends, not boo things, not side dudes. Husbands have got up, packed their bunkin' junk and left their marriages like, like it was nothing, okay? Yesterday, this got real to me because, you know, the third time's a charm. So it got real to me yesterday. It got so real to me yesterday. I came in the house, cussed my own husband out. I said, look, I wish you would just get up one day and pack yo." And my husband was looking at me like, what? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I took it personal yesterday. I'm like, I'm sick of this. What's going on? What's going on right now is coronavirus. Okay. People are right now forced to not only look at themselves, but they're forced to look at their spouses and they're forced with the situation. I talked about this in a video where I said 30 days in from coronavirus, I was looking at my husband like, I don't know. I don't know, dude. We, you know, you here, you still here. <laughs> it got to be a lot. And when we're forced to sit inside of ourselves and really take a good long look at our lives, sometimes some things that we haven't been so happy with, but we just been pushing them, sweeping them under the rug, that stuff starts to surface. And then never mind the fact that you're looking at your spouse or your other, and you can always pick out somebody else's flaws much quicker than you can pick out your own, right? So a lot of people are existing, right? Just... You work eight hours, maybe 10, maybe 12 hours a day. You have hobbies and interests. Guys, they like to go play golf. They like to go to the cigar bar. You have things to do. Women were going to girls' nights out, girls' trips, vacating, shopping, doing those things we do. But right now, nobody has really has a sense of relief, right? We're just stuck, we're stuck with each other. I'm looking at you, you looking at me, looking at you, looking at me, sick of you looking at me. <laughs> a lot and let's be honest here because we just want we want to be honest on this channel a lot of people men especially but women are guilty of it too have a breath of fresh air on the side right i've had a lot of guys tell me the only reason why i'm still married is because of keisha if it wasn't for keisha twice a week i would have been done got divorced but keisha gives me my sigh of relief but right now, even the grimiest of dude, I don't care how grimy he is, how long he's been cheating on you, there's two things he doesn't want to do right now. He doesn't want to get COVID-19 from Keisha, and he doesn't want to bring it home to his family. So he can't move about through life like he used to. And he is stuck dealing with you. You stuck dealing with him. I know a lot of people in situations like that. And don't come in my comment section asking me am I one of them because no, I don't have a boo on the side. <laughs> Ladies, this video is about securing your bag, okay? That's what we're talking about today because this is real to me. Three situations, three very different but the same situations in 30 days, okay? Wife number one, married for some years, Husband got mad over something petty, packed his bags, the woman in his car, left the house. She's like, girl, he gone. I say, you calling? No, I ain't calling him. Week go by, two weeks go by. Girl, you heard from him? No, girl, I ain't think about him. 
What you doing, girl? How you doing? Oh, girl, I'm getting ready to go to Neiman's. I'm, I'm sitting here paying the bills. I'm getting ready to go to Neiman's and see what they get, you know. Life ain't skip a beat. Wife number two, kids. Got access to the money. He ain't take the money. Devastated, hurt, a little broken, but for the kids more so than anything because she's like, you know, the kids need their daddy. The kids are asking, where is their father? Situation number three, stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home wife for years, no plan B, no side hustle, no Poshmark selling account, no arts and crafts, nothing, no access to the money. Period. Not a debit card, not a checkbook, not a can't go make a withdrawal or a deposit. Nothing. When the refrigerator gets emptied out, don't know how it's going to get full again right now. He ain't calling. He ain't saying nothing. I used to hear men doing this back in the 60s, you know, 60s and 70s. I know people, I grew up with people, their father just got up one day, said, I'm going to go get a pack of pale males, and he never came back. They never saw him again. But right now, in this day and age we live in, you know, you find folks. So people don't, people don't really do that type of stuff anymore. But ladies, it's on trend again. That's what you need to know. It's on trend again. These men getting sick and tired. They getting fed up. They can't go to the cigar bar. They can't hang out with Keisha. And they can't go play golf right now. And they just might get up and walk out the front door. And if they do, it would absolutely be a devastating situation. It absolutely would. But it's going to be far more devastating for you if you haven't secured your bag. This is important. Wife number three, I gave up everything. I gave up my friends. I gave up my family. My family, I stopped talking to them because they was always hating. They was always judging. They were always saying, watch him. You better watch him. I don't have anything. I don't have a circle. I don't have a group around me. I have nothing. I have no one I can call. I have no one I can talk to. I say this all the time. I don't say you first just for the selfish people in the back. That's for everybody. You first. Women think that the way that they can love on their family and be a dedicated wife and be a dedicated mother is to give up everything that that makes them happy. Ain't no time for happiness around here. I got to cook. I got to clean. I got to bake. That couldn't be further from the truth. You can't give anybody what you don't have. How you pouring love into your family when you don't even love yourself enough to take the time out to love on yourself and care for your family? And trust me, you think that you're doing a far better job than you are. Ask your family. I hear this from guys all the time. Like my wife don't do, my wife does nothing. My wife has no hobbies. My wife has no interest. Some of y'all just sitting at home waiting on him to come back from playing golf. So you can talk to him about how many hole in ones he got and how many cigars he smoked at the cigar bar. You living vicariously through him because you don't have a life of your own. Doing that. You can't be happy. You can't live a happy and fulfilled life like that. There's nothing in marriage vows that says when you say I do, you give up everything yourself, your friends, your family. Any man who loves you doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to be living a happy, fulfilled life. Your children want you to be happy and fulfilled. They don't want you to be all about them 100% of the time. They don't want that from you. They don't. So stop doing that. But let's talk about securing your bag, okay? My mother was with a man for 20 years. This is how I saw this play out. He got cancer. She nursed him back to health. He got cancer again. She nursed him back to health. And one day he fell down and broke his hip 
and his children came in like some thieves in the night, packed him up, took him and put him in a room in their basement so they could start collecting his money. My mother had nothing. I said, Ma, you ain't got nothing. She said, I don't have anything. I don't know what I'm going to do. I had to help her. I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, Ma, 20 years? You could have been putting $20 in your bra every week. He would have never knew nothing about it. And the day they came and picked him up and took him to their room to live in his in their basement, you could have been like, ooh, hallelujah, finally, I'm free. I'm free. I can live. Thank you. Take care. Take good care of your daddy. Because <laughs> y'all ain't never done nothing for him. I can live now. My mother was 50 when this happened. 50-year-old woman picking up the pieces, trying to get it all back together again. Had nothing. I said, that will never be me. If you don't work outside of the home, there's being able to stay home and take care of your family is a beautiful thing because most families in this day and age are two income households. They're two income families. So if you're blessed enough to be able to stay at home, that is amazing. That's a beautiful thing. But think about the day that something may go wrong. Anything can happen. Have a side hustle, a hobby. Most women who stay at home and their husbands do very well love to shop, right? Love to spend money, but they have nothing coming in. If that's you, sell your stuff on Poshmark that you ain't using. Open up a Poshmark store. Get on YouTube, do YouTube videos. Learn how to knit and sell hats to the Boy Scouts. Do some Thing. Put money to the side for a rainy day. Your husband has to give you money at some point in time for something. That's just the way that goes. Put the change away. My husband already knows no change backseats around here, boo. No, ain't no change backseats. My husband could give me a hundred dollar bill and say, go buy me a piece of hubba bubba bubble gum. And he knows $99.75 of that money is going in my bra. It's going in my bag. No change back seats. <laughs> Ain't never asked me for change. I wish he would come to my dad. I got any change. <laughs> you have change. You better go somewhere and make a change. <laughs> Get your life in order. Put money away. I don't understand what it is with having everything in someone else's name and you don't have access to anything. You don't have access to anything. First of all, you need to think about what kind of situation that is if somebody even dies, right? Let's say somebody dies. There's a process that you have to go through to get assets when people die, especially when they haven't laid it all out, which many of us don't do, right? Few people actually have it laid all out. You need to have access, immediate access to cash, to resources if something goes wrong. And not only that, there are so many women in this world who are living in situations that they don't want to be in. Situations that they shouldn't be in, abusive situations, situations where they can't stand the man that they sleep beside every day, but they can't leave because they don't have the resources to leave. Take care of yourself and always be thinking about your future. Always be thinking about your future. It is so important. You cannot live in a marriage, in a life where everything is his name. Something got to be out me. I'm like, my put my name go right here. This, this is, this, sign your name right here. My name go right here. We have to stop putting our everything into our marriages. 
You cannot put all of your trust into a situation. There are people who have been married for 20, 30 years who somebody got up one day and just said, see you, wouldn't want to be you. Secure your bag. Thank you so much for listening to me today. Until I see you again, be blessed and bye for now.